absolutely critical for your dog's mental and physical health while you're working from home. I remember working from home for the very first time and really struggling with staying productive. So in this video, I want to share the things that worked for me to keep my dogs tired, exercised, and happy while staying really productive at work. I want to start on a really heavy note and then I'm going to get into some really awesome hacks for you guys. But this one I want to start with because it's so important and I think it's something that all of us, myself included as pet parents, overlook. And that is your stress ultimately becomes your pet's burden. Your pets are the most empathetic being in your life. And that means the more stressed you are, the more stressed they can become. For the first tip, I want you to grab your planner or your calendar or your free calendar on your phone. And I want you to write your schedule out for tomorrow. And this is what I want your schedule to look like. So most people feed their dogs one to two times a day, usually before work and after work. But now that you're working remotely and to keep your dog exercised and entertained, I want you to split that up into three feeding sessions. First thing I want you to do is split up your dog's meals for tomorrow into three portions. For the first portion, I want you to stuff it into a Kong or a smart feeder, and I want you to put it in the freezer overnight. When it comes time for the first feeding session, which will be breakfast, I want you to set your timer for 15 minutes, not five, not 10, but 15 minutes. And I want you to feed your dog a third of their meal, the first portion, using basic commands and making them work for it. You can do sits, you can do downs, you can do stays where you put them in a stay and then you walk back three feet, come back and then reward. Then at lunchtime, I want you to open up that freezer door, pull out that frozen Kong or frozen smart feeder and give it to your dog. This will be their meal number two. Then for the final meal of the day, you'll take the final third portion of their meal and work with them for another 15 minutes. If you took this strategy and you did nothing else at all, you will take your high energy dog and you will break them down at least two, three, maybe five points. Okay, now this next tip is going to be awesome for both you and your dog when you're working from home and that is called block scheduling. What I want you to do is to pick a few key projects you need to do for work. Let's say it's an Excel project. Set your timer for 30 to 60 minutes. Before you push start on that timer, put your dog in a D-O-W-N and a stay command. You could put it on their dog bed or on a mat on the floor in your office. Have them stay in a stay command while you work for 30 minutes or maybe even up to 60 minutes if your dogs are advanced on whatever project it is that you need to get done. When that timer goes off, reward your dog calmly, give them a praise treat or play and release them. What you don't realize is when you ask your dog for a stay and they're staying for that whole time, they are actually working their mind. You are literally exercising your dog by having them stay in a position and you work on a project. It's seriously an incredible tool. Now, obviously, if you have not worked on stay with your dog, you want to start on shorter durations and work your way up. These are the results, guys. Like This is what you can expect if you follow these steps in this video. For this next tip, you're not going to like it. You're probably going to hate me for it, but it is important. And that is to set your alarm for one hour earlier than you actually need to get up. I want you to get out of that bed. I want you to make your bed. I want you to get up and I want you to exercise your dog. I want you to start the day before you start work, giving your dogs some physical stimulation. It's important that you take care of yourself mentally and your dogs mentally. It's so easy when you're working from home, especially if you're not used to it, to really get focused in on work and working way more than you normally would, which can burn you out. So what I recommend is grab that handy dandy calendar or planner and schedule three 10 to 15 minute breaks every single day. This is separate from the meal time. And what I want you to do during these breaks is to work with your dogs on some indoor exercise activities. Some of my favorite ones are puppy push up, the level up stay command and tug of war. If you guys want specific details on what that looks like, click the video linked up here. You guys will notice that my dogs here, one is on a dog bed, one is not. Finn is not the biggest fan of dog beds. Sometimes he'll lay in them. Oftentimes he, like, he likes to lay on the floor. Comment below, are your dogs really into dog beds uh, or do they like to lay on the floor like Finn? It's so bizarre. Bentley, on the other hand, loves dog beds. So one thing I recommend that if you're new to working from home, consider bringing their dog bed or whatever they like to lay on into your office. Even if your office is the living room, bring their dog bed near you and for parts of the day, allow them to just be with you. On that same note, because I don't want my dogs to become too dependent on having me around 24 seven, 
I do give them timeouts and not in the negative connotation. I just mean I put them in a separate room from wherever I'm working and have them be separate from me for about 30 to 60 minutes a day at least. And what this does is just get them used to me not always being by their side. It's really important to build up their confidence. It just really helps eliminate potential issues in the future once their schedule changes. The next three tips are absolutely critical for your dog's mental and physical health while you're working from home. But before I jump into them, I want to please ask you to click that subscribe button. Help us on our mission to save all the damn dogs. So for the first essential tip, please, for the love of dog, do not overdo it on the treats. I have noticed that what I, or I noticed when I first started working from home, I was giving them a lot more chews and treats. And what's important is if you're giving your dogs, in my opinion, an excess amount of treats or more treats and chews than they normally consume, make sure you reduce the total amount of food from their meals by just a little bit. Because what we don't want is for our dogs to gain an unhealthy amount of weight. For this next tip, please don't judge me. Please just hear me out. This is not foo-foo. I've actually seen this really help my dog and my cat for that matter and that is talk to your dogs and what I mean by that is right now I don't know if you're like me comment below if you are but I'm really worried and I'm really stressed with all the chaos and the pandemic going on in the world it's impacting people very near and dear to me and it's weighing on my heart heavily and it's really hard for me to keep my stress levels low which is important to me because I don't want my dogs to feel my stress because they don't understand what's going on so to help with that I try to keep busy and stay productive with a positive mindset in addition to that I talk to them I tell them hey guys I'm feeling stressed right now and there's a lot going on in the world right now and it's really scary and I know you're feeling stress from me but know that things are going to be better and it's going to be okay. They may not understand English, but I do believe that my dogs understand my intention. So talk to your dogs, tell your dogs what's going on and tell them that it's going to be okay and you're gonna work harder on lowering your stress. I want you to pay attention because this is not only good for you, your dog, but also your community. As of right now in lockdown with this pandemic going on in the US, as of today, Pet stores, local independent pet shops are considered essential. And what that means is your local pet shop is likely still open for business. And what you might not realize is 99% of these independent pet shops, I'm not talking about the big box pet co and pet smart, but I'm talking about your neighborhood pet store. They're owned by a family in your neighborhood in most situations. These are the people's livelihoods and most of them are in business to help pet pairs. They're not in it to make a quick buck. So it's really important in my opinion opinion to support the local independent pet stores and the way that you can do that and help your dog stay busy while working from home is to get some natural chews. You guys know that I'm a big advocate for single ingredient natural chews. So for example, fish beams, which are just dehydrated fish skins, uh, bully sticks. I really like natural horns that have been sustainably sourced. And I also like these things called cocoa chews, which is a coconut fiber that dogs can chew on. All of these things have one single ingredient. And for my dogs, they are strong, aggressive chewers. All of these things keep them busy for at least 20, 30 minutes. One that I'm going to be making a video on soon is my boys love frozen chicken feet that I get from Answers Pet Food and frozen raw, these are all completely raw, pig's feet. I know it sounds insane. I have a video coming up soon. Just to kind of level up and keep your dogs active and thinking and engaged with you. Every time, this is something I love doing with my dogs. Every time I walk through a doorway, I ask them for an SIT. And what's really cool about this is if you have a dog that likes to bolt out the front door, this can help stop that behavior. But what I want my dogs to know is if I walk, if I'm walking through a door, I want them to SIT and wait for me to go out first. And that's really easy to teach. You just ask them to SIT. And when you leave the room, then you can release them. And again, this is just an easy little hack to really tire your dogs out doing everyday stuff. And what I want you guys to do as a best practice is I want you to record or take a picture of your dog doing one of the things we talked about here. And I want you to tag me on Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok at Rachel Fasaro and upload it so I can share and inspire the world. I want to encourage pet parents to do more. That's like, literally, that's the sign I have behind me. I want all of us to take what we're doing today with our dogs, the baseline, and I want us to just up it just a little bit. I want us to do more with our dog, play more with our dog, train our dogs more, feed our dogs better 
more often. And I'm not saying drastically, but just a little bit, I want us to do more together. And by you sharing what you're doing more with your dogs can help encourage and inspire other people. And if you guys want to see a video on what I recommend for the ideal dog food and the best kind of foods I can feed your dogs, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day.